Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a short little knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the QSP Mamba V2, uh, which is absolutely available right now. And it is not very expensive. And QSP always does a pretty good job with their execution. So I'll make sure and link it right down below so you guys can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use my links, but that is entirely up to you. Thanks so much to QSP for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I'm going to try and get through the initial specs here very quickly because I don't have a lot to say about this knife, but I do have a few points that I need to make. Overall length of the Mamba V2 is coming in at eight inches and uh, the blade length is coming in at three and a half inches with a cutting edge of about 3.35. This is extremely similar to the original Mamba. There's just a couple of changes that I'm aware of. If there are others, mm, I don't have the original Mamba still here, but it's. I went back and looked at my first video and it is super, super similar. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Just a few today up against the Ontario Rad Model 1 and the Ontario Rad Model 2. So you can see here that this is definitely what I would call a full-size knife. It's just not quite as big as the Rat 1. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? There you go. How about up against the Demco AD20.5? There we go. And yeah, let's do the bug out. How about that? The bug out. Mm, similar in size to the bug out. Carry profile. It is definitely thicker than the bug out. And by the way, the action is very good. It's exactly what you'd expect. Good detent, good snap, right? QSP generally does a good job with that. Thickness, uh, it's about the same as the Para 3, maybe slightly thicker. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. You can see here that this is kind of a long, fit, somewhat narrow profile. It's got a little flipper tab, but not super tall. It's just a hair longer, eh, more than a hair longer than the Para 3, but definitely shorter than the PM2. Maximum height, nowhere near the hump in the Para 3 or PM2. Let's go ahead and weigh it. So what are we looking at for materials? We, we are looking at D2 steel. We're gonna talk more about that. Stay tuned. I, I really, there's a, there's a point I need to make about this knife. Um, we've got micarta. You have a few different options for micarta. And we have nice polished steel liners underneath that are milled out for some weight reduction. Uh, so the overall weight on this knife, definitely need some new batteries for the scale. 3.39 ounces, which is almost a perfect one-to-one -one ratio as far as the whole ounce and inch thing goes. So nice ratios there. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. T8 for the pivot. I'm not even going to check these. These are going to be T6, same with the pocket clip screws, and they are minimal. One of the changes that I noticed is that we've got a little filler tab over here, which is fine. You can definitely switch the pocket clip for left or right handed carry. I think uh, a better way to do this would have just been to mill a slot for the pocket clip and then have the holes there. Um, but the filler tab thing works just fine. So can't complain too much. Outside of that, truthfully, unless they thinned up the scales or something or offered a different finish in the blade, I'm not super aware of many changes about this knife. So this is gonna be a pretty straightforward review. Um, blade stock thickness, let's go ahead and get out my calipers, which are also dying. Wow, the Metal Complex YouTube channel sure is premium quality, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, the blade stock on this guy is about 100 and whoops. Let's try that again. I think it said 120 to 124, maybe 125. Yeah, 125,000. So we're looking at roughly the same. It does look thinner though, doesn't it? Supposedly that's the same as the Ritter Hogue. Okay. Um, time for new batteries on that thing for sure. Uh, what else do we have here? Is that it? I think that's about it. Okay, so the Mamba, it does have a nice handle profile. QSP does a pretty good job of this. Sometimes the designs are pretty, I mean, this is one of those knives that has a very knife profile, right? Handle profile, very, you know, it. these are the, the types of knives that bring out the, that's a copy of the whatever comments, right? You see that all the time. It's not a copy of anything. And anything that somebody says it's a copy of, that knife copied about a thousand other knives that have generic knife profiles. The blade is too generic to be a copy of anything. The handle profile, too generic to be a copy of anything. I promise, anything that anybody can compare this to, I can find a thousand knives that came before, not really a thousand, but 
easily dozens of designs that came years before that are just generic knife profiles, right? So I guess, I don't know, it helps me out. If you leave a comment, it definitely helps out the video. So if you feel like you need to force that through, by all means, go ahead. It helps my content, but it's not. It's just not a, it's not a copy of anything. We do have shadow boxed liners here. I kind of like that you get to see the polish all the way around. QSP just does a really nice job with polishing. And speaking of polishing, the blade here has a nice satin finish on it. I'm not really the biggest fan of satin finishes because usually they leave sharp edges in areas where you might put your fingers. But truthfully, these are fingernail shavings just to prove a point. That swedge is a little bit, that's not sharp like a blade, but it's got a, sh a sharp angle on it. These edges here have been nicely chamfered down, so no issue there. But as far as QSP satin finishes go, they look pretty good. Their tumbled finish is still better though. I would have preferred that. We have some jimping out here. Truthfully, nice lock-in all the way around. Even with the shadow box liners, which if they're done too pronounced, you know, can kind of dig into your hands, feels pretty comfortable. And uh, the clip is pretty good too. It does look it's, like it's got a pretty pronounced bill. And if, you know, I'd be lying if I said I couldn't feel it at all, but it's still pretty shallow. It is definitely more shallow than the overly pronounced uh, standard clip that you get on a Civivi knife. And for that reason, I really prefer, I mean, that and the fact that this is shorter, I prefer this type of clip, you know, just, it, it's night and day. I mean, it, no matter what, I'm gonna, th this is just a better clip all the way around is what I'm saying. Um, really simple construction, really straightforward. It's kind of the same type of thing that we've been seeing here. This is a nice, I don't know, I'm gonna call it a clip point. You can call it what you want. I'm gonna call it a clip point. Nice thin edge down here, the final cutting bevel definitely sharpened very well. This is gonna slice, it's gonna puncture, it's gonna do it efficiently, and there's nothing in the cutting path. It's also got a nice sharpening choil. D2, definitely don't mind that composition, especially for the price point, um, which I'll go ahead and say right now is about 45 bucks, right? As far as the materials themselves go, that's pretty par for the course, right? And I know a lot of people were maybe you're just sticking around to hear the price. I have more to say about that, right? On paper, the materials, right, and the price, it all syncs up. This is made in China. QSP's got a good, you know, reputation for execution and quality. It's all there. But I have another point to make. Um, we have a couple of standoffs back here, simple standoffs, so no issue there. That's fine. We have a lanyard hole. That's fine. I prefer the, the little, just the, the lanyard bar or no lanyard hole at all, but it's not in the way. The clip is absolutely deep carry. The only issue here, the only slight issue, it's not really a full on issue. I wish the clips, or I'm sorry, the screws were recessed. They're not, not really that big of a deal. Um, this micarta is not super grabby or textured, um, which is fine in and out of the pocket. It'll be really easy. We have a stop pin right here. Little tiny bit of shouldering. This knife is running on, can we see in there? You know, actually, got to stop and pause for a second because I think this might... Is it running on bearings or is it running on phosphor bronze? Nope, it's bearings. I can see in there. I'm sorry. If you could see, I have these white diffuser sheets up in front of me and you can definitely see through there and see the bearings. So anyway, that would have been incredible action for, you know, phosphor bronze. Action is very consistent and smooth. I'm sure over time you could get this thing to drop shut by itself. It takes a little bit of encouragement right now, but it is consistent, so that's nice. No blade play up, down, left, or right. We're locking up at something like mm, 25 to 30%. No lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash, the detent, a nice click, and perfect centering. No detent lash either, did I say that? Okay, so what is it? What do you wanna say, Complex? We sat here and waited through the whole video. Three retailers. Three retailers I went to and looked in their description. They're listing this D2 as being heat treated anywhere from 57 to 59. On paper, D2, micarta, steel liners, flipper running on bearings, right? 45 bucks and it's this level of quality. Yeah, good to go. Good to go, right? Now, there is a chance that maybe these retailers got either the wrong information, maybe they got generic information or they're just filling, I don't know, right? But I went to check three different listings at three different retailers listed the Mamba V2 as having D2 steel, uh, Rockwell hardened to 57 to 59. If that is true, 
My opinion, I got to be careful about this. I got to say my opinion before everything. My opinion is that that is unacceptable. Even at $45, that is unacceptable. Uh, at this price range and, you know, with this composition, we should be 60 bare minimum and up to 62, which is closer to optimal. I mean, it might actually be optimal for D2 steel, right? I do. I am not a metallurgist. I, I don't heat treat blades, right? I'm somebody, like many people watching this video, I'm just somebody who reads. I am a fan of QSP knives, right? Absolutely. Their quality is very good. But, you know, we can polish up surfaces and we can, you know, tune detents all day and all night. The final bow, the cherry on top, this is a knife at the end of the day, right? So this particular, and I'm not saying anything below 60 is bad universally and anything above 60 is good universally. No, some steels actually are better. Some, some compositions are better. 1095, for example, is much more optimal at 58 because of what it is, right? Because of its, of its makeup, its cake mix. It is better in, at 58, 59 than it is at 61, 62, 63, right? M390, D2, and a handful of other steels, you know, there are companies trying to get away with this 59 and below heat treatment, and it's just not, it, 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 you're losing out on the main benefit, the main purpose of this specific composition. And again, I know we're looking at a budget knife, but uh, from what I understand about D2, and it's, you know, again, I'm not a metallurgist and there's a lot to know. There's a lot to know, way more than I can even comprehend. But my opinion is that 57 to 59 Rockwell on a D2 blade, even at $45, is unacceptable. 60 to 62 is where we should be hitting this. Um, so, uh, you know, otherwise I would be, you know... I would be uh, all day, you know, uh, I'd, be, I'd say, yeah, this is great, great deal, right? But, um, you know, I, I'm sure that it costs more to get it up there, but I, I'm willing to pay more money. You know, if, let's say that this knife costs, you know, $55 or $60 with a D2 blade that's heat treated at 61 or 62. Well, then it, it's, it's worth it because you're not, you're just not getting the, the benefit of the composition at, uh, yeah, it's going to be easier to sharpen, might not be as chippy, but the idea behind D2, one of the benefits is that it holds a really good edge in this, at this price point, right? It holds a really good edge versus other steels that you'll find at this price point. And is still, even at those numbers, D2 is still pretty tough and it's almost stainless, right? And it's still not that bad. It's not the worst steel in the world. It's not my favorite steel to sharpen, but it's not the worst in the world, right? So will it be harder to sharpen at 61 or so versus 57, 58, 59? Well, yeah, but I think it's worth it. I think the payout and the balance is still worth it. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of seeing these low numbers. Um, when, I, when I am aware of it, which I'm not always, because truthfully, guys, these, these manufacturers and these retailers, they don't always list these numbers right? But when I am aware of it, if I am aware that it is, it, it's outside the general, like the optimal range for a composition, in my opinion, then I'm going to, I'm going to say something from now on. Um, the, this needs to be higher. Um, so this is a, this is a pass for me on this one. Sorry. Uh, I do appreciate QSP sending this out. They do definitely have other things in their line that have hit the correct range before, as far as it, it is presented on retailer sites. And uh, I'm always happy to, um, you know, direct people that way. But uh, a good deal is not, you know, it's, it's only a surface level good deal if things aren't being executed in an optimal fashion. So that's going to be pretty much it. <laughs> I don't like having to do these, but you know, it, this is going to happen sometimes. So anyways, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either exp uh, expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.